love you with all our mind. We love you with all our soul. Every fiber of our being. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Oh, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you for what you've done. I love you for what you're doing right now. I love you if you never do another thing. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I love you because you're merciful. Hallelujah. Oh, I love you because you love me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you right now. We thank you for this, your house. We thank you for these, your people, Lord. Lord, I ask you right now, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, Lord, let it be acceptable in that sight. You are my strength and you are my redeemer. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You've been so good. Oh, you've been so good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Think through my mind and speak through my vocal cords. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Continue to bless your people, Lord. Continue to bring forth understanding and clarity, Lord. Oh, give them what they need to apply this word to their lives, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We, have, we, we would have come for nothing if we don't get understanding of your word. Hallelujah. I want understanding of the word. Hallelujah. Well, you got to speak it. You got to ask for it. I want understanding of your word. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, and we praise you. In Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Repeat after me. I will open my mind. I will listen to the spoken word. I will read and follow in the written word. I will understand how the word is used and explained. And I will use this word for myself. And I will use this word for myself. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Before you, before you take your seat, shake two or three people's hand. Tell them, I'm ready for the word. I, I'm ready for the word. I'm ready for the word. Oh, I'm ready for the word. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. I'm ready for the word. Thank you, Jesus. I'm ready. 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 Hallelujah. I'm ready for the word. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Woo! Ready for the word. God is a good God. Thought so much about us that he gave us his word. Oh, hallelujah. Thought so much about us that he gave us his son. Man, if you didn't catch that, they both the same thing. The word is the, the son and the son is the word. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I received in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. Amen, amen. Thank God we, I, you know, you got, usually we don't have that, you know, we went two weeks, we've been going hard two weeks long. I'm, I'm tired, I don't know about y'all, I'm tired. We went through the, the district meeting and then we went through the women's convention, it was in Cleveland, and, 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 and you know, those of you that made whatever days you could make, amen, praise God, we, we just had a good time. I, I, I like to, to be at meetings like that, and, and, and especially uh, when they have the um, revival flavor to, you know, to them, because, you know, people can come in and, 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 and preach the word and then leave. And, and what I found out as pastor is that, you know, you know, the word is important, but most important is not only you receiving the word, but me, me constantly coming here, seeing what word you need. 
And so I, I, thank, I thank God for that. I thank God for um, uh, uh, being able to go myself and be revived. I, you know, I got, a, I got away from a long time ago. People used to say, oh, you, you know, this person did this word, and they say, oh, this one is, you know, you, 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 you try not to do what somebody else does. Everybody is going from the word. So everybody is copying Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, you know, Paul, and, you know, everybody is copying somebody if you're using the word. Now, if you're not using the word, I don't want to hear you anyway. That's right. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. And so, I, I, you know, as I, we've been dealing with the, 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 being the seed of God, amen, I am the seed of Abraham, I heard a scripture, and it said, it just spoke to me and said, that's, that's next in what we've been dealing with, amen? So if y'all, you know, those of you who were there and, and, and those of you who were not, I mean, uh, you have to bring stuff back for your people. Bishop always says, take what you can understand and then bring it back. You know, and that's for everybody. Right. And, you know, even as you come here today, take that which you understand and then go out there and tell somebody else. Right. Right. You know, every time you come in on Sunday, it's not just for you. Amen. It's not just for you to, you know, to, to hear the word and have a good time and then leave out of here and then don't use the word. The word is for you to get and then for you to understand and then for you to take what you know and go back out there and share with a, with, with, with a dead world, right. with a dying world, with a world that believes that they can do whatever they want, whatever's right in my sight, I can do whatever I want. If I'm a man and today and I feel like a woman today, I can go into the women's bathroom and, and, and it should be all right. I mean, it, this is, this is the, the world we're living in right now is saying what's right is wrong is right and what's right is wrong. And not only are they saying it, they, the court system is starting to back them up. Starting to back them up. Starting to say, I don't care uh, what you believe. If you bake a cake, then you better bake a cake for whoever asked you to bake it. Well, I don't believe in that. I'm not going to do it. Well, jail. And I'm telling y'all, you're going to have to bail me out. Y'all going to have to come get me because the time is going to come when two men, two women are going to come in and say, I want you to marry me. And I'm going to say no. And then they're going to send the police on me and I'm going to jail. I'm going to jail. I'm telling you, I'm going to jail. And y'all going to have to pray me out and bail me out. But the time is coming. Are you listen to the news. Listen to the news. They now have to legislate the fact that pastors don't have to do, uh, don't, 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 don't have to obey that law. And some states are saying yes, and some states are saying no. It's coming. Oh, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Second, Chron Second Chronicles 7 and 14. Second Chronicles 7 and 14. Word of God says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. As we keep that particular scripture in mind, I, I, as we talk about some of the things that we know, after we've been going over and over in terms of this year and dealing with righteousness, I know who I am. Everybody in here should be able to say, I know who I am. Uh, uh, from Galatians 3 and 29, it says, if you be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs to the promise, right? I know who I am. I know who I am. I'm Abraham's seed. I'm in Christ and I'm heir to the promise. I know that, that, that as seed, everything that I need and everything that I will ever need is already in me. It's already in me, but I'm just a seed. Everything has not grown up in me and everything has not come out of me. But everything that I need is in me if I'm the seed of Abraham. Amen? Amen. 
I know I have been promised success by God. If you know the promises of God, you know God said, I'm going to bless them. I'm going to bless you. I'm, I'm going I'm, I'm to uh, uh, bless all families in the earth through you. And so if all the families on the earth are going to be blessed through you and through me, then everything that we need is already in me. We know that there are things that keep seed from growing. We've talked about that. There are things that keep seed from growing. Uh, uh, one, when uh, uh, seed, us, we allow Satan to come and take away the word that we get that, that make us, makes us strong in the Lord. We allow them to come take it. Soon, soon, some of us right now, as soon as we leave the church, we talked about it, we, we're going to allow Satan to just come and take what we, what we heard and, and, and replace it what's out there in the world. You know, you, 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 you're going to have the opinion of, well, I came to church, I did my church thing, now let me go do my world stuff. Let me go. You know, because right now you, you, you still think of your life as a pie chart. Ooh, this. this part, you know, you know how to pie, you see a pie? Uh, uh, this, this part is church, this part is school, this part is uh, 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 being at home, and you know, every slice of the pie is different, and God only has a slice. But until you realize that if you take that pie and you, you put a circle in the mi middle and you make that God, then every part of the pie has to touch that's a touch. That's a touch. And so, you, you know, that's where God belongs, in the center. He belongs in the center, and so that everything has to touch him. But when you just make God a, a, a piece of the pie, then I'll do my God thing, and then I'll move on to the other slice. That doesn't include God at all. You know, I go with my boys. I go with my girls. We go do this. We go do what we've been, we've been doing this for 30 years. I ain't, I ain't, this is what we do. And God is not a part of it. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You know, things that, that stop the, the seed from growing. Uh, you, you, you don't have deep roots. So, you know, you, you have some word, but it ain't deep. And so as soon as uh, uh, some comes, you, you, you say, yeah, I believe in God, but. Uh, 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 the, and, and the other thing is just, it's just crowded out. It's crowded out by the worries of life, by the lure of wealth. I mean, you got so much, I want it, and I want it now, and I want it, and I don't want to wait, that you, you, you don't have room to, uh, to wait on God. You think God is a genie in a bottle, and because God is not doing it as fast as you want it, or, or you just want stuff too fast, you want too much, and you ain't making nothing. You want what the Joneses have, but you don't want to go through what the Joneses went through to get what they have. You don't even know what they went through. You just want what they have. Amen. And so you don't have time. Man, I got time to wait on this church stuff. I ain't got no time to pray. I don't have time to have patience. I don't have time. Man, I got time for all that. I, I got to get mine, and I got to get it now. Well, that's going to crowd out your seed, and that's going to kill. You'll see. You said I was the seed of Abraham, but, 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 but the seed of Abraham don't act like that. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And so those things, uh, those are the things that keep your seed from growing right. But we learned last week that we know that every generation must come to the point where they must wake up. I've got to come to the point where I must wake up and I must choose who I'm going to follow. Right? right? With Genesis 28, 16 and 17, it says, And Jacob awakened out of his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. He said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I didn't even know it. Surely the Lord is in this place, and I've been acting a fool. Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not even recognize his presence. I've just been doing what I wanted to do when I wanted to do it, and I called it right. That's a messed up thing when, you, when you, you, you realize the Lord is in this place, but you haven't been acting or recognizing the Lord in this place. Because he said, and, and 17, he said, and he was afraid and said, how dreadful is this place? None of, uh, 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 this is none other but the house of God, and, and this is the gate of heaven. And, 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 you know, and he talked about that, and he said, this is a dreadful place to be. This is an awful place. This is a messed up place to be in when you're, when you're in the presence of God and don't even recognize it. 
When you, and, 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 and here's the other thing you have to understand, when you accept God and, 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 and you accept, you know, Jesus as your personal Savior, and then he deposits the Holy Spirit in you right away, then every time you, you, you go to some illicit place or you do some illicit thing, you bring God right in there with you. You might have thought you left him at the church. You might have thought you left him home, but he walked right there with you. Because cause, cause this is the kingdom of God. Amen. You know, the kingdom of God he is in you. And so every place you go, the kingdom of God you take with you. Right. You know, because you haven't renounced God. You haven't said, I don't love God no more. I don't, you, 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 you still say, I love God, right? You still call yourself a, a, a Christian. But you take God to places where God is like, hey, hey, I ain't trying to go there. Where you going? Where Oh, thank you, Jesus. So he said, wow, this is, this is dreadful. This is messed up. This is, this is, this is a dreadful place. Don't know, but, but, and this is it's the house of God and it's the gate to heaven. And I don't even recognize it. And so we choose to accept the promises of God. You have to choose that for yourself. He, he, he you know, uh, 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 in Genesis 28, 20 to 22, Jacob said, who was, we talked about that, the third generation from Abraham. And even though Abraham's seed, God promised everything to Abraham's seed, we found out last week that each generation has to accept the promise. You know, each generation has to say, you know, because uh, Isaac had two sons, but it only went through Jacob. And so as you go down through the generations, even when it gets to us, not everybody in your family is following God. Not all your kids are following God. But you have to make sure that, 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 that the generations still come through you, and once you've made the, uh, the decision to accept God for yourself, now it's up to them. Amen. It has to keep going. It's going to keep going because God promised it to my seed. He promised Abraham's seed and he promised it to my seed. Because I just say whatever he promised Abraham, me too. But it's up to us. And then it's up to them. And then it'll be up to their children. But we have to lead the way, guide the way, and show the way. Well, thank you, Jesus. And so Jacob, hallelujah, being in that third generation in 20, Genesis 28, 20 to 22, he said, uh, uh, Jacob vowed a vow saying, hey, if God be with me uh, uh, and will keep me in his way that I go and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on so I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God. Well, if he going to do all that, then I just, I just declare right now, I'm go, the Lord is going to be my God, my choice. The Lord is going to be my God. Hey, if every, everything the Word of God says I can have, I can have, well, woo! Then guess what? The Lord is going to be my God. Right. I mean, that's the choice you have to make. If the Lord is going to be your God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And so once we wake up and realize who we are, once we wake up and realize whose we are, God has a challenge for his people. And a lot of times, uh, this particular promise, uh, it, 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 you know, or his challenge is for God's people who are not experiencing his promises. I see the Abraham. I said me too, but I'm not getting what the Lord said I can have. What's going on? Well, let's go back to 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. Because the word of God said, he said, if my people... Well, the very first thing he said was, if. Yeah, if, if. That, so, so at very beginning, the very first word says, you know, if you decide to do this, it, it, you have a choice. You know, it says if. It says if. And, and, and the if is, you can do it or you can not do it. You know, and, and, and that, I love God because he always, he always puts it in, in front of you like that. Matter of fact, in Deuteronomy, even before that, he said, I set before you life and death, blessings and cursings. And then it goes down a little bit further and it tells you, choose life. He said, just in case you're too stupid to understand uh, life and death and blessings and cursing, that, that blessings is, is connected to life and, and, and cursings is connected to death. He tells you, guess what? Shh, choose life, choose life. He, he, he lets you know there's choices, and then he, he even gives you the answer to the test. He so 
to choose life. Choose life. Choose life. But he didn't say, I'm going to make you choose life. He just said, I set before you blessings, cursings, life, death, and this one, this one. This is the one for you. So he said, if, if, you have a choice. If, if it's like the weeding process and, 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 and the growing process, you know, the, the, the if part is, you know, if my, you know, if you pull, it is, it's, you know, are you going to decide to pull the weeds so that you can grow well or you just going to let the weeds stay there? You know, some folks just plant stuff and don't care nothing about it and they let the plants grow with weeds. So it's growing, but you don't really care about it. So it says if. So that, that's, that's, that's the starting point, if. This is something that can happen if you choose what, to do what I'm about to tell you. But if you don't, then you don't need me to read. You don't need me to read. He says, if my people. Now right now we know that he's talking to a, a, a specific category. He's talking to people who are the seed of Abraham. Because he went through all of this, you know, all that he went through to choose Abraham and, and, and to choose Abraham to, 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 to be the foundation of his people. And then he, he, you know, and so for us going through Christ makes us connected with Abraham. So we be in Christ, we are Abraham's seed and there's according to the promise. And so now what he's, when he's talking about my people, he's talking about us too. He ain't talking about all oh, black people, you know, my people. No, he ain't talking about that. He ain't talking about that. He ain't talking about the pride in your heritage. He's not talking about, you know, Japanese, Chinese. He's not, he's not talking about skin color relationship. He's talking about those who have identified themselves as seed of Abraham being in Christ. Those of us that said, me too. Those of us that said, I am the seed of Abraham. He's now talking to us. He said, now if, my people choose what I'm saying. He said, if my people. Then he said, call by my name. I said, well, well, we are your people. But he said, it's my people who are called by my name. And I started thinking about that. And I, so that means that while you and I are out there, or they said, hey, 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 woman of God. Hey, hey, man of God. Come here, come here. Or they still calling you by what they called you by when they knew you in the world. I mean, have, have, have what you have been called by, has it changed since you've been his people? How are you different? I mean, at, at your job, they say, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Will you pray for me? You're now the prayer person. You have now been identified. I mean, it's, it's, you are being called be called by his name. Hey, Christian. Hey, Reverend. You know what I mean? Are they, are they calling you? Or, you know, or, or they say, hey, pimp, hey, player, hey. Hey, hey, how you doing? I can't even say what the girls be calling each other. Hey, H, hey, B. What are you being called by? If my people who are called by my name. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Well, humble yourselves. Well, realize that you are not all that and that you don't know everything. I mean, I know you go to church. I know how you get the word, but you don't get a license to beat up on nobody. You don't get a license to say, I'm holier than thou and you ain't nothing. You don't even get a license to tell somebody they're on their way to hell. The only thing God told you to do is tell them the way to, to the Lord, not the way to hell. You ought to compel men to accept Jesus, not give them direction to where they're on their way to. Amen. 
Let me tell you how important uh, uh, being humble is. Look at Psalms 138 and 6. Word of God says, though the Lord is great, he cares for the humble, but keeps his distance from the proud. And so, they, so, so as, as we look at this, just from the word, you don't have to say, well, Pastor Hicks, uh, this is my definition. Uh, no, they're not. Uh, uh, you know, the, the, the opposite of being humble is being proud. If he wants you to be humble, it means he does not want you to be proud. Amen. Psalms 149 and 4 says, for the Lord delights in his people. He crowns the humble with victory. Matthew 23 and 12 says, but, but those who exalt themselves, they're going to be humbled. And those who humble themselves will be exalted. Amen. Ephesians 4 and 2 says, always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Philippians 2 and 3, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. That's, that's the opposite of the world. Psh, they ain't nothing, they ain't, nothing. I ain't, I ain't, they ain't better than me. I, I, they James 4 and 10, humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up in honor. This humble thing is, a, is an important thing. And then I like it in, in the New Living Translation because those have been New Living Translations, but James 4 and 7. Now we know what um, uh, 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 the King James says, but uh, uh, here it says, so humble yourselves before God, resist the devil, and he will flee. Well, we even now we even know that word humble is also synonymous with submit. To submit yourself to God is to humble yourself before God. To not think of yourself, uh, uh, you know, as more than what you are. To acknowledge that it is God and God alone that is responsible for me. It's not you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And so he says, you know, if my people will humble themselves, And pray. No, 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 no. That's just, if my people who will humble themselves, one, admit you're not all that, and then pray, have a communication with who is all that. See, the thing is, when we pray, we're, we're acknowledging to ourselves that I don't have all the answers, and, but I do know who does have all the answers. So, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm humbling myself, and I'm praying to God. I'm talking to God, and I'm asking God to help me in my situation. I'm not asking God to be my genie. I'm not asking God to, you know, I, you know I'm not... You know, I'm not asking God, you know, we, you know how we do. We go to God and we ask him for everything we, we want, like, he's, like Santa Claus. You've been taught that when you was little to go sit on Santa Claus' lap and tell him what you want. That's not God. And so what we do is, and we have to break that habit, is we get down, we kneel, and we say, God, I need this, and I want you to do this, and please bless my family, and please bless my kids. And then we get up. What kind of conversation is that? You know, you have that conversation with your friends and, and you just start talking to them and, and you tell them all, you know, all your stuff and then you'd be like, okay, see you later. <laughs> they don't want to talk to you because you don't, you don't have time to listen to them. You know, all you have time is to go and talk to them and, and, and you call them up and tell them what you want. And then after that, you're done. That's all you call because you wanted something? He didn't say, how you doing? You didn't say, you know, how you feeling? He didn't say, boo. He didn't say nothing. He just took care of your stuff and hung up. That's what we do to God. We, we take care. We're not even listening. God might want something from you. 
You ever stay down there long enough to listen and see what God might have wants you to do? Pray. Pray, 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 pray. If my people will call by my name, will humble themselves and pray. And then we gloss over this one because we don't really understand it. And seek my face. understand this look if you're thinking about it uh, uh it's to seek god's face is is is, is 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 to understand what do i look like or how do people see me you know you know we want to know what you know what does god look like how do people see him why do we need to know that so then i can imitate him well god is he's, he's merciful He's full of grace. He's faithful. He's loving. You know, and I begin to seek his face. I begin to see what he looks like and what other people see, what, what are his characteristics. Because I want to seek his face so that I can be more like him. This my people who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. See, so we don't spend time seeking who God is. He's holy. He's separate. Sanctified. He don't just, he, you know, he's like oil and water with this world. He don't mix in with the world. Even when he's out there, you know who he is when he's in you. You just don't fit in. You can put oil in water all you want and get, get around. You will see the oil and you will see the water. We are supposed to be light in darkness. If my people will call by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, y'all help me say, then. then. If I was writing it, I would have put a only then. Then and only then. See, because you can't even begin reading the second part until you do this first part. He says, he says, then. Oh, thank you, Jesus. No, no, no. Ain't no thing. I forgot one. Turn from my wicked ways. Woo, how could I forget that one? Turn. If my people will, hum will, will, will humble themselves, my people will call by the names, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Well, well, see, the thing is about, I, see, I, I got to thin too quick, but see, the thing is, until I know what God looks like, until I know who God is, and I, until I know, you know, the characteristics of God, I don't have the ability to turn from my wicked ways because I don't recognize my ways as being wicked. They just been my ways. They just been, they just been who I've been. They just, they just been who I am. They just been who, you know, I'm just like my mama. I'm just like my daddy. I'm just like I, I'm my, my grandmama. I just, this is just who I am. But I turned from my wicked ways. You know, this is that, that this one, again, we, we, we go through this one so fast. But, but, but here's the thing. I first must make inventory of my ways. I make inventory of my ways and then I line them up with the face that I saw. I, I line them up with God's ways and then I begin to say, well, this one's okay, but this is messed up. I'm mean, I'm nasty. I don't have patience, I don't have love. Wicked ways, wicked ways, wicked ways. You gotta... You, you have to have something identified in order to turn from it. You just can't be like, I turn from my wicked ways. Yeah, yeah, I turn from my wicked ways. 
You see, what we know is we, we can identify somebody else's wicked ways. And we, we really good at telling them what they need to turn from. But the Bible doesn't say uh, uh, help somebody turn from their wicked ways. You don't say that. It's a turn from it. See, you got enough. You got enough to deal with with your own list. You got your own list to, uh, uh, to, to, to write down. You have your own list to compare to the word of God. And you have your own list to turn from. How you got time to be telling somebody else what's on their list? Matter of fact, you, you, not only do you have time to tell them what's on their list, you have time to make their list for them. <laughs> here, here, baby, here your list. I just thought I'd help you out a little bit. <laughs> Let me just help you out. Where your list? I ain't started on it yet. <laughs> you know, when we look at the list, it don't matter how long you had them. It don't even matter how long you, how much you, how, how much you like your ways. There's some folk that like their ways. I like being a diva. I like, you know, I, you know, I, I, I like being the, uh, uh, the folk thinking I'm mean. They don't mess with me. I like, you know, I like, I like. It. Oh, amen. Being church bullies. You find them at the on the usher board and in the kitchen. Church bullies, church bullies. Not here though, not here y'all. I ain't talking about us, huh? we got sweet us. But, but, I'm, but, I, but I'm serious, I mean, you know, about where you find them in certain places. Amen. Get territorial. Beat you up with your word, with their words. And the church. Wicked ways, wicked ways, wicked ways, wicked ways. No, I, you know, it don't matter how much you, you, you like them, don't matter how, how, you know, how much you identify with those ways. It don't matter. If they don't line up with the face of God, I've got to I got to turn from them. I have to see the thing is, is that, and, and see this particular scripture is counting on you being honest with yourself. Amen. It counts on you being honest. It's not counting on you lying to yourself like, hey, it's okay for me to be like that. It's okay for me to talk like that. It's okay for me to treat people like that. They don't mind. No, no, it's not counting on you uh, 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 trying to make yourself believe what you're doing is okay. If I can't imagine God doing it, then I shouldn't be. Then. <laughs> now we got a thin. Woo. Now we got a thin. And only then. But see, it's a lot of work. We take that scripture, if my people call by my name, will, will humble themselves and pray and seek my faith. Woo, I've done that. I've done it. I'm good. No. This is work script. This is a work scripture. This is something you put in practice. This is something that you work on for a period of time. Humbling yourselves, praying, seeking his face. This is a lifestyle change. He's a, God is saying, my people need a lifestyle change. But God still, even when God sees his people one way and gives instructions on how to change your lifestyle and be another way, even though he made all the promises that he made to Abraham, he's still such a gracious and faithful God that he's going to ask some more. Just in this. 
Because he says, then. Well, first of all, he says, then will I hear from heaven? Now, now have you ever, ever wondered, though, what's being heard? Is it then, will I hear from heaven? Well, well, what you hear, God? What you hear? What you hear? <laughs> I've been hearing that you didn't humble yourself. I, I've been hearing from heaven that you're praying now. I, I, I've been hearing that you're seeking my face. I, I, I've been hearing that you've been turning from your wicked way. See, that's what I'm hearing. That's what I hear. I hear, I, 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 I hear from heaven. See, you can't fool me. And you can't fool nobody I, because I'm going to hear from heaven that you're doing what I asked you to, that I asked you to do. I didn't give you an assignment, my people. And when I hear from heaven that you are completed or even that you're doing, because you ain't going to never complete it. That you're doing what I've asked you to do, then will I hear from heaven. Then will I forgive their sin. Wait, 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 time out. Didn't he just call us his people? Didn't he just say, who are called by my name? So we're talking about Christian folk needs, I need sin forgiven. Christians, us. The seed of Abraham, we have sin that we need to be forgiven, but we're not, it, that it's not being forgiven. Y'all don't get that? Y'all don't get, y'all get that? He says, then would their sin be forgiven? Well, that means that before then, their sin was not being, it wasn't being forgiven. Why? Because you wasn't humble. Why? Because you wasn't praying. Why? Because you wasn't seeking his face. Why? Because you got wicked ways that you like. You got willful sin in your life and and you want me to forgive it. I ain't forgiving nothing because you won't even acknowledge that you ain't humble. You won't even acknowledge that you're not praying. You won't even acknowledge, hallelujah, that you ain't seeking my face. You won't even acknowledge that you're wicked. You're wicked. And we ain't not, we're not even talking about folks in the street who have not accepted Christ. We ain't talking about them. We know what they're doing. We're talking about y'all. We're talking about us. We're talking about, he, talk, he, said, he called you out. My, my people, if my people. Y'all doing all kind of everything. And you won't acknowledge it and you won't even try to change. He said, but if you do, I'm going to forgive your sin. And then he said, if you do, I'm going to heal your land. But if you don't, we don't even see that. You, you, but do you see that if you don't? Because he says, then will I. After you do all of that. So if you don't do all of that, you don't get a then. You don't get a then. He ain't even going to hear from heaven on your case. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. He said, then will I heal their land. Now, y'all got to remember, in the, in, the, in the Old Testament, the land, God's land was the kingdom of God, right? And so he needed to heal the land, heal the kingdom of God. Well, in the New Testament, the kingdom of God is where? I need some healing. I need some healing in me. I need some, I need some healing. I need some deliverance. I need some recovery. I need some freedom. I need it in me. Why won't God take care of me? Because you won't do what he asked you to do. How can I be the seed of Abraham? How can I have all the promises and I'm not getting nothing? Because you ain't been applying the word to your life. You're not growing right. Oh, thank you, Jesus. 
Then why he'll heal their land? God's people will not do what it takes to be healed. You want to be God's people, and you want everything God wants you to have, but you don't want to do what God has asked you to do. If I want to be God's people, I mean, I, I'm, I'm the seed of Abraham when I accept Christ. But the seed is just a seed. And you've got to grow. But you've got to grow right. We had a plant in here. We had one of these plants in here that had been here for, for uh, uh, you want to grab that plant? Grab that plant for me. It had been in here a, a, a while. It, and it had been here through the winter. And it was one of these. You see how, you see how this is growing? But it was in here, and it was in darkness, and it wasn't getting the sunlight that it needed. And so it grew, but it didn't grow right. And so you can have everything that you need to be who God wants you to be in you. But if you're not applying the proper uh, 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 things that... That, that seed need nutrients, yes, water. Weed out the things that don't belong there. Pull them out, get them out of there. You know, weeds don't need to grow with you. Weeds need to be pulled up. You know, we tried, this thing was, this thing was, it was linked all over. It was supposed to grow straight, and I, and I put a, a stick here to help prop it up. To help it grow right, but it was just, it was growing, but it wasn't growing right. And it was, it was, it was sickly looking, but it was still growing. Same seed. Same seed that one of these have is this seed. But see, it didn't get what it needed. And it didn't get a lot of light. So you got to stay close to the it didn't get a lot of sun. Yay, yay, I like that one better. It didn't get a lot of sun. So when you keep yourself from the sun, oh man, thank you, because that go right back to what I said at the very beginning. The sun is the same as the word. Jesus is the word. And when you don't get enough sun, S-O-N, you're going to be just like this plant that didn't get enough sun, S-U-N, right. and you're going to grow sickly, sickly. Yeah. And you're not going to be who you should be in God or in Christ. Come on, we're standing. So, 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 what that did for me and what, what that taught me is that I don't, we're very quick to tell people, you ain't saved, and you ain't saved. But God didn't say they wasn't saved because he called them my people. And my people were saved. But my people wasn't humble. And my people wasn't praying. And my people wasn't seeking my face. And my people were not turning from their wicked ways. You know what that sounds like? I got, God said, I got people who are satisfied where they are. I got people who, you know, they feel like I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I know Jesus. I love Jesus. And I'm good. You know. I'm at the finger pointing stage and I like it. I'm better at helping other folk get better than me getting better. But this is the thing that we say, physician, heal thyself. I got to work on me. I got to work on me. Because the, the more light I have, the more, the, the more light other people see and, 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 and the more people I can draw toward me. 
can't draw anybody if I'm more like them than I am like God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We sing that song, I love you, Jesus. I love you more than anything. But my ways. <laughs> I like my ways, too. I like my ways. I, I love my ways, too. I don't, I don't want to give them up. I don't want to give them up. But you've got to make a decision. If you want the things of God, and you want to be, I mean, just think, the thing is, we're supposed, to, we're supposed to look powerful out there. People are supposed to see us and want what we have. But we got too common. We're too common. We, we, we you know, we, we, we're too worldly. We're too, I mean, we just, we won't stand out. Does anybody in here have use for a light bulb that won't come on? Do you, I mean, do you really? I mean, do you have any you? I mean, do you, anybody store light bulbs that don't come on? Do they have any value? Because when you get in darkness <laughs> and you need a light bulb to come on, you don't want to be messing around with something that won't come on, it's no good. And some of us, we walk around in darkness like light bulbs that won't come on. We do not let our light shine. We don't come on. Are you a Christian? Yeah, I'm a Christian. I didn't, I didn't even know. If anybody ever tell you, I, I didn't know you were saved, that's because your light don't come on. It don't come on. So when they was in the dark and you was there, they, was, they, they didn't see no light. They were still in the dark. What's the word use is a candle that's, that's hid? Right? Hid under a bushel. It's no good. Is there one today you are not saved? You have not given your life to the Lord. You have not even, you're not even identified as my people. And as you heard today, look, God's people are not perfect. So if you've been waiting to, till you got perfect to join the church, you will never find an opportunity to join because you'll never be perfect. And guess what? When you get saved, you still will not be perfect. You will find yourself needing to humble yourself. You're going to find yourself needing to pray when you don't pray. You're going to find yourself needing to seek God when you don't seek him. And you're going to find yourself needing to turn from your wicked ways when they keep popping up. But now you got a formula. To deal with your mess. I'm not saved and I want to be saved. If you just raise your hand with me right now. I want to accept Jesus and I just, I want everything that the Bible says I can have. And I, I want to accept Jesus as my personal Savior. If you want to raise your hand with me right now. Everybody else, every head bowed, every eye closed. Those with your hands up, repeat after me. Father, in the name of Jesus. I accept your son as my personal savior. I ask him into my life right now. I ask him to forgive me of my sin right now. I ask him to lead my life, to lead me, to guide me. I ask him to fill me with the precious Holy Spirit, to give me the power to apply the word of God to my life. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise.
in your sight. 